Okay, I've got a clone comparison video between a Sabenza 21 clone and a real Sabenza 21. Now, before anybody gets all over me about this, they're not identical. The Sabenza um, that I bought is, um, I got such a good deal over the holidays, Christmas holidays, that I bought a couple that were unique uh, custom Sabenzas. But other than the one scale, which is a little bit different, and a little bit different finish on the knife blade. There's Sabenzas, and this is what I've got to compare to, so we just have to live with it. So please don't give me a hard time about, oh, well, they're not perfectly identical. They're close enough, and they're both Sabenza 21s. And I've also got a small Sabenza 21 that I'm just going to throw in here also, just to show off since I got such a great deal at Christmas. Um, so here's uh, how, they how they come. <coughs> Excuse me. This is the real Sabenza packaging and this is the clone so the real one is on the right I mean you to me I was amazed at just like they're doing to spider code they're doing this to Sabenza they're very close they're not identical but they're close so that's the fake here's the real one Here on the end, I don't know if that's a, you know, a fake of a real sticker someplace because I've never had Sabenzas before. This is uh, my first. So you open them up. Now, this is where you start seeing that there's a little bit of a difference. But if you didn't know Sabenzas, you could get fooled. Um, so the real Sabenza, and I, I, I folded this. It, it, believe me, it looked much nicer. Whoever folded it knew what they were doing uh, when they put it in the box. So this is just me trying to get it back in the box. You know, it comes in this cloth here, which is a pretty nice, I guess that's, I don't know if it's microfiber or what it is, but this is the cloth that everybody gets with a Chris Reeve knife, or at least most of them. Um, I have seen uh, this cloth faked and included, it doesn't have this heavy embossing though, it's not quite as nice as this, but it's almost uh, with, some, um, with some Kevin John Hinderer knockoffs of, of all things that were just thrown in the box. Uh, so they do clone this cloth. Here's my Sabenza 21. It's a unique, it's a reverse silver, I think they call it. So you've got the cloth that it's wrapped in, and it was quite a wrap job. You've got this uh, birth certificate thing here, and there's some differences in this. You can see what I've got. It's large Sabenza 21 unique graphic. Got a glove quality kind of leather, um, you know, um, what you would call this, kind of a sheath holder kind of thing here. This is the lanyard that I cut off of it. I'm not into lanyards. Uh, down here is um, the lanyard pin. got a sticker and then it's got some instructions in the warranty card and stuff like that and it also comes with a wrench so we're gonna go we're gonna compare some of the stuff in a minute and set it aside here uh, so here is the fake you open it up it's really strange that they didn't put the um, the cloth in here because I know that they faked the cloth so it's wrapped in some cheap cellophane and shoved into this uh, this guy here. So this is a, a leather, you know, cover, leather holder, sheath, whatever you want to call it. It's got some think twice, cut once. It's they've made an effort here, but they haven't made much of an effort. I mean, this is weak, cheap, flimsy, low quality leather. I mean, it looks like it'd come apart and dissolve on you pretty fast. And you can look at the difference here. This has got a lot of body to it. I mean this is just, this leather's not going to last long at all. Not that important in the long run, but um, it's got some of the documentation in here. It's got like, this is the information in the warranty card thing. I'm not going to go over all the details on that where they got them dead straight on that particular piece, but I'm going to compare this one. It's got the guarantee. And I'm mainly going over things that you could that you could see 
in a fake if you got a if someone showed you a picture one of the things they get wrong on all these and then all the other auctions or all the other sales threads is they list it as a Savenza 25 which is I don't know how they could get that mistake but they do you know they even got the signature kind of you know similar I'm sure they this is a computer kind of thing When they printed this thing, you can see they've got something going on down here. Come on, focus. Where this line, this rule around here, box, didn't print properly. Signed is underlined. I'm not going to go over this in a great amount of detail, but mainly they got, you can see that the font is greatly different on the Chris Reeves knives. This is the real one. And you can see how they overran the rule. Looks like they probably cut and pasted in some things there. And it says Cutler instead of knives. Chris Reeves Cutler. I don't know if that's a copy of something older or something. The logo's a little different. So all those things are a little different. Enough of that. Uh, let's look at the knives now. So put these guys aside. Interestingly, though, here is a real Chris Reeves small Sabenza, and it is in a greatly different uh, box. This is a real Chris Reeves. This is how it came. There's my little piece of something in here. I guess I'm just showing some of the stuff that came on it. Doesn't say Chris Reeves cutlery on it. It says Chris Reeves knives. It's small Sabenza. This is a little wider sheet. I think. Well, it's the same. So these are two real ones. These are the two ones I just got. Okay. And here's the stuff that came in tucked with it. A little small cover, another sticker, another towel. They come with wrenches. Here's the lanyard I took out and some grease. The, the big one didn't come with the grease. I was kind of surprised. So here's these two knives. Sabenza 21s. Um, by the way, at the end of this video, after I post it, I've got one guy who's bought some knives from me before. I'm going to offer this knife up to him first. If he doesn't want it, this knife is for sale. I'm just, I just got it to review, and uh, then I'm, it's going to be go away. I'm not interested in collecting clones, to be perfectly honest with you. I just review them. So uh, here's my Semenza 21. I didn't think I was going to get one of these, but um, I, got, I ran into such a great deal on these things that I guarantee I got these for, um, for probably cost. And so I bought this one. And I bought a small during the holidays, and uh, I didn't. I never thought I was going to buy one of these things, but I, it was something that I couldn't pass up because there's no way I could lose money on these unless I just destroyed them or something. If I didn't tear them up or anything, they, I would always get my money back out of them. So uh, when you get something for 40 or 50 percent off, you can't kind of go wrong on it. So here's the real Sabenza. Obviously, if I'm going to compare the clone, the clone is um, just the kind of raw titanium that's got a um, glass bead blast kind of finish on it. These are a little, going to be a little different also in the trim because this silver ones don't come with the blue on them so you're not going to see any blue parts on, on any of these. Even on this one you can see the little lanyard piece which is trapped in here. It won't trap on the big one but uh, it's silver. Everything's silver. They don't put the blue anodized stuff on there. So this is kind of how you would normally get a, 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 just a box stock regular Sabenza 21. You can see that uh, they made a mistake where this one in the past was flat. It wasn't cupped like that. They fixed that. Um, I would say that the finish probably is not quite as good on the titanium. And I'm just going to compare the back. They're a little, you know, I don't know. It's, maybe it's a little finer finish. Maybe not. Uh, one of the things they do get wrong on these things is if you look at the Idaho markings on them. 
Now the clone is on the right. You can see what it looks like is when they did uh, the Idaho made markings on here. I don't know if that's a stamping or what it is, but it looks to me like what they did was they uh, stamped them first and then they blasted the hell out of them. So uh, the stampings are almost gone on them and so is the logo in the front. You can see the logo is barely perceptible, which on a real Chris Reeve is, is it's considered, it, it's there. I mean, it's there, but it's, you could, you know, believe me, to the naked eye, you can't see it quite as good as you can here. I get a little focus action going on here. Um, the other thing that they kind of get wrong on here is this is an option, but the regular Sabenza 21s don't come with a double stud on them. They come with a single stud, single-sided stud. Um, Another thing I noticed on here is the um, chamfer on the edges. Is if you look at this thing, and then if you look at the real one, and this won't really matter whether it's how it's finished, and uh, you can see that on the other side actually better. Since you're... Let's see, so the real one is on the top. I don't know if you can appreciate that so much, but this chamfer is much smaller on the bottom, on the top one, which is the real one. I don't really see that so much in this picture. Let's see. Real one's on the top. Huh, they look greatly different to my eye than they do on the camera. Most of the things are pretty, pretty, pretty straight on it as far as the jimping is about the same. The way the blade backs are finished are about the same. Um, the blades themselves are pretty darn close. Now I think they put a little different finish on th this reverse 21 because what they do is they bead blast on the real one. They bead blast the top and then when they grind this they don't bead blast the blade. And I think on the uh, plain Savenzas, they do like the clone is. It's all, uh, or not bead blast, but uh, stone tumble. So you can see, so these are going to be a little bit different. Uh, the only thing you can really notice here is that if you look at the, I guess, the grain of the uh, stone tumble, you'll see it's coarser, and I'm looking at the top there. Not, you can look at all of it, but I'm mainly reflecting across the top portion here, this portion up at the top. is if you look at the real one, it looks like their tumbling media was a little finer. But I think that's a hard point to appreciate if you're looking at a video or a picture trying to figure out whether you have a clone or not. So um, then you get the sharpening choil areas are done pretty close. The edges, the chamfers on the, uh, hand, the scales are done pretty close. And the clone is very sharp as is the uh, real one. These knives are very sharp. Um, now the action on Sabenza's opening and closing action is, every, is always going to be very heavy and there's no way around that and the reason is is that they've got this long heavy uh, integral lock that is bearing on the blade constantly and then on top of that they've taken, I think this is a mistake in engineering, I think they should put this clip over here or cross it over or something like that but They've got the clip over here, which is putting heavy pressure on this uh, lock bar. So you've got like a double press. Now, one of the things this clip does is it probably helps as a stop when you're pushing on it to keep from you. I mean, when you push on the, try to unlock the blade, you've got a, uh, you've got a lot of pressure to go against to unlock the blade, to move the blade, you know, to unlock it from open right, right here. Um, same thing on the clone, except more so. And, the, and one of the ways you can see this is if you pull the lock, if you pull the clip back. I don't really see it so much on there. Let me see if I can, no, I noticed this when I was playing with it. That, yep, that doesn't move, move as much as I thought. Uh, when, the, when the handle's out, you notice it more. When you pull the clip back, uh, that you can see the lock bar come back and kind of relax a little bit. So what I was talking about, about the action of, a, of the Sabenzas, and this is new to me, is that you're never going to get this really 
loosened up action that much. It's smooth and everything, but because this uh, blade uh, lock is always bearing on it, and the way you can check when you get them whether you can do anything, um, I opened this one up, cleaned it up, and lubed it, and adjusted it a little bit, but I didn't sand the, um, the bearing washers in there. But I did get it down where, with adjustment, it's in lubrication. And the way you check this is you push the lock all the way off, and then you see how well, how easily it falls here. And once you've got it to this point in modifying it, you really can't do anything else to make it any looser, I don't think, because the rest of that is how much this, this um, lock bears on it. And if you can get it to do these two things here where it's, it will fall easily with the lock pushed open, if it'll do that and it'll do that, you got about as easy a working semenza as you're going to get. I'm sure it will wear in and loosen up more and the, probably the lock will loosen up a little bit from use. But So this one was really tough when I got it. And uh, it wouldn't do any of that. And now it's kind of still a little bit tough, but I've got it where you can push on the lock and it wouldn't do this at all. And the way I did that is I had to take the bronze washers out and I had to sand them down with some diamond uh, sanding, with some diamond stones, and then uh, polish it on some ceramics to get it this smooth. It's pretty smooth now. Um, it's still a little stiff to open. It's got a heavy detent on it. You have to break. And then it's still pretty stiff all the way through. Now I've had this one a, a month or two and it's loosening up a little bit. It's very smooth. And I've mainly just, uh, I almost cut myself there. It's mainly um, cleaned, you know, it's, I cleaned it up, I lubed it, and then I also, you know, adjusted everything where it seemed like it was working pretty good on it. Um, and I'm going to show you the inside of both of these knives here in just a minute. So i got 16 minutes into this. This is going to be a long video. Um, and I've also uh, worked with this one a little bit as far as taking it apart and cleaning it up, uh, it up to get it like this. Now, if you take those washers down much, you're going to induce probably play, side-to-side -side play of the blade. So you got to be real careful when you're fooling with this. And uh, when I was sanding those washers down in this one, I was very careful not to induce any play. And this blade is very tight and locks, locks up nice. Um, fore and aft and side to side, there's really there's not much there. The problem with these knives, and I'll show you this when we take them apart, is that one of the things that Chris Reeve prides itself in is how they get these surfaces perfectly to perfect dimensions where you can clamp all these down tight. All these, these two frame mount uh, pins and the pivot pin, you just crank them down and it doesn't really affect the action of the knife. And that's unlike almost every other knife out there. Every other knife out there, you've got to tweak around on these to get the right pressures, especially the pivot pin, for the action to work like you want it. Chris Reeves is, uh, they've, they've, they've got this stuff engineered where it's perfect, um, and where it's close enough to being perfect enough that you just clamp them down and it works like this and the blade stays perfectly centered. That's not what you get here. <clears throat> This knife has to be, uh, these things have to be set up where you adjust each one of these frame pins and the pivot pin, <coughs> excuse me, where they are set up where the blade is centered and will work and not be bound. And so that's, the, that's what you get with a 10 times more expensive knife because that's what we're talking about here is 9 to 10 times more money for this one than this one. Now this one, though, the blade is centered in it pretty good and... Um, Unless it's shifted, no, it's centered. Um, and the action works pretty good, and I'm sure it will loosen up. I've done quite a bit of work. I took a thousandth off, one thousandth off each washer and polished them with ceramics to get them where they, it works pretty good. It just needs the, the tent's a little heavy, and it still, the action's a little heavy. Probably if you start working it. The only other thing about it is that the, uh, it looks like it's carburized on this frame here, and uh, it's a little sticky. And the Chris Reeves, I understand, can be a little sticky too, but these aren't. They're, and I've worked them a little bit, so they might have been sticky to begin with, but I've had them a couple of months now, so uh, they've been worked. So I'm going to take these knives apart and show you the inside of both of them, and then I may come back and wrap this up. Um, and if you have any questions, definitely ask. And then remember, this knife uh, is for sale. I just want the cash that I got in it. It's about $50 uh, with shipping and everything to get this knife to you. So uh, it's a very nice knife. Uh, it's just, it is not a Chris Reeve. It's but it's a nice knife. I mean, when you think what I, my first titanium knife I bought 
in the in ninety one it was a titanium dive knife and I think I paid seven hundred dollars for it. It was a scuba pro dive knife and it had a titanium blade in it. So the fact that you can get something with all this titanium in it and good quality steel as far as we know. We don't know what this is. It's supposed to be D2. This is S35 um, VN. So um, let me uh, go to a um, disassembly. I'm not going to show you the disassembly. I'm just going to take them apart and then show you the parts uh, after they're disassembled. Thank you. One more thing I'm going to do before I go to the disassembly is I'm going to weigh these to see how close they are. And I have not done this. So... Uh, So the real Chris Reeve so here's the pin in the lanyard is 132 grams 4 and 5 eighths ounces 132 And the fake, <clears throat> 144, 12, 12 grams difference, five and an eighth. So, you know, a quarter of an ounce or so difference. Not a lot, but a little bit. So just want to throw that in there. Okay, now that we've time warped into this, I've got the real one on the right and the uh, fake one on the left and it's um you can see it's truly amazing how close these things are <clears throat> to each other you can see that the um, blades are basically constructed identically that i can tell um, you know the grind um, even the guy who did the grind on this blade i've seen some pretty you know irregular not necessarily great grinds from um Chinese knockoffs where they weren't, per, you know, very faithful and they, there wasn't, you know, very wavy and that the guy was not super talented. But I would say this grind on this blade is very good. And uh, you can see they both have the bushing in there. You can see uh, where the detent ball rests and how it tracks. They've got track marks on both of them. <clears throat> One of the big things, now the things that you can't see we'll talk about also, which is the machining. Uh, you can see that uh, Chris Reeve uses these different kind of washers here that trap uh, lubricant in there and hold it so that, you know, it, as you can fill those little holes with, um, you know, a little bit of grease and it'll stay there. Whereas they're just using uh, plain phosphor bronze uh, bearing washers um, on the knockoff. <clears throat> the, uh, as is usual... Uh, and these are pretty good, though, um, that I can tell. I haven't had anything strip or nothing felt like it was going to strip. But usually on the Chinese knockoffs, the, um, the hardware is kind of cheap. So let's compare these two heads here. The real one is on the right, and the fake is on the left. And you can see that the real one is polished and the fake has turn marks, machine marks. It still is very good and it's, you know, the turn marks is uh, a definitely kind of a style thing where it catches the light and reflects it in a circle. So, I mean, I can't say that, you know, the, the correct one is the one on the right where it's just perfectly, it's a mirror polish. Uh, but there's a little bit of difference there. The it's exact same Torx head uh, works on both of them. The... Um, through pins, you know, also reflect that on the surface, on the machining on the, on the head face there. You can see the turn marks making a swirl and it's polished on the right. Um, the pins themselves, you know, I think they're, I think these are, I feel like aluminum. I haven't put a magnet on them, but of course they could be stainless, but um, there's definitely a little bit of difference there. You can see the real one on the right is, uh, is very thin walled as opposed to this one. The way it's machined is a little different, but <clears throat> is there a practical difference in that? I don't know. And these are the, um, 
little spacers, and there's a slight, maybe a slight difference in them, but it's pretty close. The real one is on the right, and the fake is on the left. About to be done with this. And then the real one is on the right here, and the fake one is on the left. There feels like there's a thickness difference. Now the problem that, the, that this fake has is that, and that the Chris Reeve is known for and why they don't have the problems they do is that these pieces are, for all practical purposes, practically perfect as far as how they're paralleled and exactly how thick they are and how thick these bushings and, and these pins are are extremely precise on a Chris Reeve. So all you do is put it together, screw those things down and snug them up and it doesn't screw with the blade centering. Nothing changes and the blade moves fine and it doesn't change the action on the blade. That is far from what you can say on this knife. This knife, obviously these um, these dimensions on the scales and on the, probably a bit more than anything else, the spacers, this thing is radically affected by how tight the frame screws are and how tight the pivot pin is. And so you can set it up right, but I mean, you'll have the blade rubbing and all kinds of stuff. And the thing about a Chris Reeve is that slot where the blade rides is so tight and there's not much space in there around the blade that you've got to get that blade in there perfect or it's rubbing. And you can get this one where it will do that, but really the pins are a little bit loose when you get them to that point. My recommendation is, and I'll do this if you want me to, if you're not going to take the knife apart and everything, I've already sanded these washers down and polished them. And, and when I get to, when I put it together right now, I'm going to clean them off. They got Rem Remington oil on them right now. I'm going to wipe them down and I'm going to put genuine Chris Reeves grease on it. <laughs> so uh, it will come with a little piece of Chris on this Chinese knockoff. Um, and so when I put them back together, if you want me to before I send it to you, is what I'll do is I'll take these screws out and I'll blue Loctite them in so that they can be removed and I'll set up the knife where the action feels the best it can feel and uh, and the blade is centered and not rubbing and that way it'll kind of lock that into position because as it stands if I set it up without doing that you're going to get it and over time it's going to start rubbing because the, through the vibration of using it and just you know it's a piece of mechanic, mechanics and also it's, a, it's something that has loose w screws on it because if you tighten them down the knife is not centered and these things are you know, it's just, it's, it's tight. So my, my recommendation is, uh, if you're not going to fool with the knife a lot, is to let me blue lock tight them in and set it up where it's right, and then it should lock them in, but it won't be a permanent lock where you can get it apart. So uh, let me put the knives back together, and uh, then we'll just sort of wrap everything up. Okay, so just to wrap this up, uh, sorry for the long video. Um, I put them back together and um, it's working good. I just put I put the Chris Reeve grease in the um, clone here, and uh, it's uh, the grease is a little thick, so it's definitely everybody likes this kind of hydraulic feel to the blade, and it's definitely and also I put a lot more grease on this one, so this one's a little thicker too, and uh, I'll probably take a little while for it to kind of distribute around in there and rub around, but. Um, very good knife quality for you know the forty to forty five to fifty bucks you pay to get one of these things. Uh, they are not the quality of this guy right here, um, you know the. But I mean it's a ton more money, and um, I got grease all over them. Um, if you're looking for if you if you're never going to buy a Chris Reeve knife and you want to see what all the hoopla is about about them, you get you certainly get more than ten percent of the quality when you buy it though is that this knife is, uh, you know, it's it's probably, I think this knife is worth, uh, you know, $100, $150 easily. I think that all of these uh, high-end knives are overpriced. I mean, this is just, you know, three screws, you know, a couple of these through pins, some titanium that's made to spec, and these spaces that are made to spec, and then a good blade. And you got, uh, people seem to think that the blades add a lot to the cost of the knife, but they don't. This piece of steel was not that expensive, I guarantee you. They probably got five, six, seven bucks in it, maybe. So, um, 
at the, at the most. And they got some money in the titanium, which obviously is cheap because you can get titanium nowadays pretty reasonable. So this knife is vastly overpriced. I would say that this knife is worth about $150 to $200. And this one probably is really worth, you know, $50 to $75. Now there's a lot of difference in here. And, you know, if these guys could get their tolerances, if not anything else, the spacer tolerances would fix the problem because if they could get the spacers set up right on these things, well, first of all, you got to get the these these edges perfectly parallel so the spacers will work and that's what Chris Reeve really brags about is getting these things perfectly parallel so that and getting the spacers to the exact same spec so that these things can be mass produced and work perfect and they do I mean I just put it back together and it's smooth and um, the blade is perfectly centered and it just works and this one I have to when I put it back together to get the blade perfectly centered I got to kind of goof around with the screws on it a little bit and they're not very tight and so uh, they'll vibrate loose which will change the the way this knife feels and functions over time so these screws will have to be loctited in there with some blue loctite for this to work properly unless someone wants to take it on as a project to make the spacers work correctly on it and there's three spacers there's the spacer that's on the blade the spacer that's you know that spacer right there for the blade stop and then this little frame spacer back here probably you could tweak those or possibly you might have to get more spacers and make some but you could probably make this knife work, work perfectly just like a Chris Reeve where you could bolt it up together and it would function fine if you just work those spacers got three spacers and make them you know made them work bright you'd have a hell of a knife there um, but since they're probably not getting everything perfectly parallel for them to mass produce this, which is like any other mass produced knife where they're trying to do it on the cheap, these things are going to fit kind of haphazard because each scale and each spacer is probably a little bit different and they're not engineered perfectly. Whereas this one kind of is engineered perfectly where they can, you know, if I lose these spacers, Chris Reef can send me spacers, I can drop them in there and the knife will bolt back up just like it does now. Whereas these things are, who knows what would happen. You could probably get some combination of spacers that would make it just like a Chris Reef perfect. But you know, I'm sure there's quite a bit of tolerance on these parts. Um, and then I'll just throw in the little Sabenza here, just as one last parting shot here of the pair I bought. I found a, a knife um, vendor who had some axe to grind with Chris Reeve and was getting out of the Chris Reeve business, selling business. And so he had these things marked to clear. And I would say that these are some kind of things that I wouldn't have originally wanted to look for this particular unique pattern of you know pattern of knives the silver without any color because most of them have got color but this is their reverse silver thing and to tell you the truth it's understated and I really kind of like it so um, so this was a good deal to get these knives at basically half price and um, so I you know went out of my way went out of my way and bought something I actually said in another video that I would never buy but um, you know, maybe these wouldn't be the patterns that these are what he had left after I got to him. And uh, there was some other patterns that he had, which were even neater. But, um, you know, these aren't bad. And for what I paid for them, I'll never lose my money on these knives. So as long as I take care of them. But uh, you can see that I've already started. Uh, this one's got some little rub marks on it where it's been pocketed. So, um, you know, they're getting some use. But, uh, But I'll try to, I always, I don't really do a lot of cutting, so uh, I just mainly cut boxes open and stuff like that. So they, they're, believe me, these aren't hard use knives. So they'll last uh, a long time. So I'll probably keep those forever. So if you have any questions about this knife, uh, don't hesitate to, uh, to make a comment or ask a question. Uh, I've got one guy that I've already committed to uh, his getting this knife if he wants it. So I've offered it to him for $50. If he doesn't want it, I'll put it up for anybody who wants it. That's what I've got in the knife to deliver to you. I paid $45 for it. It's probably going to cost me 5 or $6 to ship it to you. So uh, that's all I'm interested in getting for it. Um, it's definitely worth that, no doubt about it. Um, so um, feel free to uh, ask any questions and, or make comments. And uh, if they're not too obnoxious, I'll leave them up there and answer them. So um, thanks for watching.